Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for January 27th, 2021. I'm teaching a series this year entitled Progress on Purpose. I'm laying the foundation for 2021 because I believe that the Father has declared that this year is a year of new levels for us, that we are going to level up in every area and every asset of our lives and every facet and aspect. But for us to do it, we have to seek that progress on purpose. We have to be intentional. So while I've been teaching on progress on purpose, I told you that we were going to level up in five areas, um, spiritually, number one, number two, financially, number three, physically, number four, internally, and number five, externally. And I'm still stuck on number two, right? I mean, so you know me, I take my time. I'm not in a hurry. I want you to get this. I want you to understand it. So we covered spiritually. We're dealing with financially now. As it relates to financially, I told you that I would cover five areas, uh, soul prosperity, you know, being prosperous on the inside first. Uh, and actually I'll be dealing with that again today, but soul prosperity and the answer to poverty. That was number one, tithes and offerings, sowing into ministry, giving to the poor. I dealt with those already. Matter of fact, yesterday's message on giving to the poor, it was so personal to me and it impacted many lives. If you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. Go to youtube.com forward slash Rick Pina. Watch that message. It's going to be a blessing to you. And then today I'm dealing with the purpose of our prosperity. What is the purpose of prosperity? Why, why is it that God wants you to be blessed? I'm not going to be able to cover all of this today, uh, but I'll introduce you to something today and then we'll flow in it tomorrow. So this is progress on purpose, leveling up in the area of your finances, the purpose of your prosperity. So what does this mean for you today? So I'm going to do something a little bit different today as it relates to the purpose of your prosperity. I know I'm talking about money and I know I'm talking about finances and all of that, but we're going to not talk about that so much today. I'm going to talk about the life of Jesus, and then I'm going to circle back. I am going to connect it to the financial aspect of your life, uh, and then tomorrow I'm really going to drive home the point. But I'm, I'm doing something today um, as it relates to understanding how Jesus lived that I think that if we get this, if we understand how Jesus lived and how we're supposed to live like Jesus lived, and as Jesus is, so are we in this world, if you can understand that, then... Really, once you get to that point, money will not be an issue. All right, so let's talk about Jesus today. You ready? All right, so what does this mean for you today? I have five things to share with you as it relates to the life of Jesus and how it applies to us. Let's go. Number one, Jesus only said and did what the Father led him to say and do. So there's many places in, in scripture that we can find this, but we're going to look at John chapter five. So in John chapter five, Jesus comes up to the pool of Bethesda. Bethesda means grace. And there was a man... Uh, with an infirmity. He had been paralyzed for 38 years. And uh, this man did nothing to earn or deserve the breakthrough. It didn't release his faith, nothing. Matter of fact, he had a bunch of excuses. Oh, every time this, you know, whatever, Jesus healed the man. Uh, Jesus extended the love and the grace of God uh, to the man. And then the, the religious people that were there, because see, religious people will mess you up. Um, you know, I, I, I like to say, you, you will always have problem with church folk, like religious people people that don't really know Jesus, but they are, they are very religious. And so Jesus had a problem with the religious people. And they had a problem with him. They had a problem because he healed this man on the Sabbath. And it was like, you're not supposed to do that. And it was like, well, you basically, Jesus is like, y'all upset because I healed him on a Saturday. You can't heal him on any day, right? But anyway, Jesus, this is what he said. John 5, verses 16 through 20. Easy to read version. The Bible says Jesus was doing all of this on the Sabbath day. So the Jews began trying to make him stop. But he said to them, listen, my father doesn't stop. My father's always working, so I'm always working. This made them even more upset, <laughs> right? At that point, the Bible says that they were determined to kill Jesus. What are you talking about? God is your father. You crazy? They thought he was not only was he breaking the law on the Sabbath, but now this was blasphemy. Jesus was saying that God was his father and that he was equal with God, the Bible says. Verse 19, but Jesus answered and said, listen, I assure you, that the son can do nothing alone. He only does what he sees the father doing. The son, the son does the same things that the father does. The father loves the son 
So the father reveals to the son what he's doing. This man was healed because the father wanted him healed. And it doesn't matter that it's Saturday. And he says, but then the father will show the son, me, even greater works than this. And then all of you are going to be amazed, right? So the religious people were very upset with Jesus. But let me, let me give you some points from this. Um, one of the points that I like to make when I'm dealing with this passage is that revelation is the authorization for your participation. Let me say that again. When God reveals something to you, divine revelation is actually an invitation or the authorization for your participation. So Jesus was basically saying, look, I only say those things I hear my father say. I only do those things I see my father do. So Jesus was seeking insight from the father. He was like, listen, the way that I live is I just get downloads from heaven. I, I get my orders from headquarters. Don't get mad at me. I, I'm just a messenger here. I'm just doing whatever the father is leading me to do. So you could be upset with me, but I'm going to keep doing what the father leads me to do, whether you guys are upset or not. I'm getting insight, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding from above. Jesus revealed to them that he was getting revelation from the father. So the father revealed to Jesus what he wanted to do in that area, in that season, within his sphere of influence. And once Jesus had revelation from the Father, it was like, oh, this is revealed knowledge. This is what you want to do, or this is what you are already doing in this area or in this season. Jesus took it as an invitation for his participation to get involved in what the Father was doing in the earth. Jesus's point was that if the Father, look at me, if the Father reveals something to you that he's doing in your area, within your sphere of influence, he's giving you the revelation as an invitation for your participation. He's saying that this is what I'm doing. I want you to get involved. And this is a major point for us because this is unlike what many Christians do. What a lot of Christians do is they say, okay, father, this is what I want to do. And since this is what I want to do, let me go into my prayer closet. Let me lay it before you. I'm going to bathe it in prayer. I'm going to Add in Jesus name to the end of it. And I'm asking you father to bless my plans for 2021. And I'm asking you father to put your stamp of approval on what I want to do. And I'm asking you to bless it. Jesus was like, that's not how I live at all. Jesus was saying, this is not how to live. You're not, you don't come up with something, that, something, and then ask God to put his stamp of approval on it. He was saying, there's a better way to live. What's the better way to live? Just ask God what he's doing. When at, Ask God, Father, what are you doing in my family? What is your will for my family, for our resources, for my friends, my sphere of influence, my business, my workplace? What are you doing? Reveal to me what you are already doing. And then as you reveal it to me, you're revealing it to me because you want me to get involved in it. And that's a different thing. So now watch this. When the Father reveals to you what he's doing and you take it as an invitation for your participation, at that point, you don't have to ask God to bless it. Why? Because it's already blessed. Because it's already what he is doing. So instead of coming up with something, asking God to bless it, why don't you find out what God is already doing? You get involved in what God is already doing. And that project is already blessed. See, now you're like, okay, cool. Now, what does this have to do with money? I'm going to get there. I'm going to tie it to money. But my point here is that if you are led of the Holy Spirit, then you will know where to go. You will know what to get uh, uh, to be involved with, what to be a part of. You will know what checks to write. And you will also know that the money has already been stored up because it's the father's will and not your own will. In the closing statement of this, you know, inter uh, exchange with the religious people, Jesus said, now this man was healed, but the father's going to show the son, me, even greater things. And then you will be amazed. Listen, this is how it is with us. God shows us stuff. And then it's like, all right, what do you want me to be involved with? And then as we get involved, it's already blessed. We don't have to ask God to bless it because we're doing his will, not our will. In John 5 and 30, in the same passage, same conversation, basically, if you drop down to verse 30, Jesus said, I can alone do nothing. He says, I can of myself do nothing. He's saying, it's not that I don't feel like doing anything by myself. He said, no, I, I, I can't do anything by myself. I'm not on this planet to do me. I'm on this planet to do him. It's all about him. I judge only the way that I'm told to judge. And my judgment is right because I'm not trying to please myself. I want only to please the one that sent me. He said, I make decisions and my decisions are always right. You know why? Because they're not my decisions. I'm being led of the Holy Spirit concerning the decisions. I'm not here. You were not designed to live your life without God. You were not designed to do your life on your own. Your life is not about you. Your life is about God. Jesus always said the right things. He always 
always perform the right actions because he was being led of the Holy Spirit in all things at all times. You now you may be thinking, well, Rick, hold on, hold on, Rick. I thought you was talking about money. I thought you was talking about finances. Okay, I'm first of all, I'm gonna get there, right? And you know, today and tomorrow. But let me just say this: basically, Jesus was saying, I'm not trying to please myself. In verse 30, he said, I only want to please the one that sent me. And so if you really want to experience overflow in every area of your life, you got to get to the point where your life is not about you or your selfish desires. If you ever get to that point, then, then money won't be an issue. You will never lack a thing, which leads me to John chapter six and my second point. So point number two, two out of five, Jesus was not on this planet to do whatever he wanted. And you are not on this planet to do what you want either. John 6 and 38, Jesus said, I came down from heaven to do what God wants, not what I want. Let me say that again. Jesus said, I came down from heaven to do what the father wants, not what I want. Jesus constantly reminded himself and his followers that he was not on this earth for a self-seeking mission. Look at me. You are not on this planet for a self seeking mission. You are not on this planet for your selfish desires. You are on this planet on assignment from the father. And since you're on assignment from the father and you're on this planet to do whatever the father leads you to do to perform his will and not your own, then listen, then whatever he wants you, wherever he leads, he feeds. Wherever he guides, he provides. If God is leading you to fund a project that you don't have the money for, duh, if he's telling you to do it, he has to provide it. If he's leading you to do something that you don't have the education for, the experience for, duh, if he's leading you to do it, he's going to have to provide you the words. He's going to have to provide you the insight. He's going to have to provide you revelation that exceeds your education. He's going to have to provide you the money that you don't have. I don't know how many times I've said to God, well, look, I'm not going to take on no pressure to do this. I'll give you an example with the Dominican Republic. When God told us to take over the Dominican Republic, uh, take over these two schools and provide these kids an education and pay for the salaries of the staff and buy a piece of land and build the project and do listen Isabella and I take on zero zero pressure to perform okay God you want this is your will if it's your will it's your bill like this is not my bill this is your bill why because it's your will and since it's your will is your bill hey I'm doing your will you have to provide it and so wherever God leads he feeds wherever he guides he provides now, if you're doing something that's you and, it's God, and God is not in it, then yeah, you're going to struggle. Light is coming on for some people. Number three. All right, number three, you are living in two realms at the same time. Now, this is something that you got to understand as well. In John 8, 23 to 30, this is what the Bible says. But Jesus said to them, he said, now you people are from down here. You're from below. I'm from above. You belong to this world. I don't belong to this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. And yes, if you don't believe that I am, you're going to die in your sins. And then they said, well, then who are you? Jesus said, I'm the one that I told you from the beginning. What do you, why do you keep asking me the same questions? He says, I have so much more to say to, to tell you. But listen, you people, I tell you, when I tell you something, you don't want to believe in the one that sent me. You don't want to believe me when I'm speaking the truth. And the Bible says they did not understand that he was talking about the father. So he said to them, okay, listen, you will lift up the son of man, right? Then you're going to know who I am. And you will know that whatever I do is not by my own authority. You will know that whatever I say came from the one that sent me. Now, the one who sent me is with me. I always do what pleases him. So he has not left me alone. While I, and while he was saying these things, the Bible says that many people finally believe. So you got to be cognizant of your duality. Um, Jesus was saying, listen, you guys are from down here. I'm from up there. Like once you're born again, the word born again in John chapter three is a Greek word, anothen. It means born from above. Once you're born again, you are born from above. Like you are in this world, but you're not of this world. You are a citizen. Let's say I have a blue passport. I'm a citizen of the United States, but I'm also a citizen of heaven. 
at the same time. Right now, some of you may be sitting down looking at your phone or your iPad or your computer, watching me, watching this message. You might be seated wherever you are, but you're also seated in heavenly places. That's Ephesians 2 and 6. You got to be cognizant of your duality. You are in two places, in two realms at the same time. And so, so yes, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. You get your orders from headquarters. You get downloads from heaven. And if you're led of the Holy Spirit, then yes, you're going to know what to do and you will never lack a thing because you're doing what the Father is leading you to do. In Philippians 3 and 20, the Bible says that our conversation is in heaven. Listen, when you talk to me, you're going to hear what heaven is saying. Yes, I know in the middle of COVID-19, the, the reason why people tune into today's word is because when you listen to me, you're not going to hear what CNN is saying. You're not going to hear what Fox News is saying. You're not going to hear MSNBC. You're going to hear what heaven is saying. Our conversation is in heaven. Listen, you are a human but you're walking around if you're born again with God on the inside of you. You are in this world, but you're not of this world. Jesus' success came from the fact that he was cognizant of his duality. He was like, you know what? I'm here. I'm, I'm living down here, but I'm, I'm getting my instructions from up there. And so, so I am getting my orders from headquarters. And if you get your orders from headquarters, then money is not going to be an issue for you because you're being led of the Holy Spirit and God has already stored up provision for his projects. And so as he's leading you to do things, the money is already there. Say amen to that. Number four, God will give you the words and God will perform the work. In John 14 and 10, the Bible says, don't you believe me that I'm in the father and that the father's in me? Because they asked him, well, Lord, before you leave, can you show us the father? And he was like, what? Can you show us the father? He was like, look, I'm trying not to get upset with you guys, but I've been with y'all for three and a half years already. What are you talking about? Show us the father. You haven't seen me. If you see me, you've seen the father. Don't you believe me that the father's in me? He says, the, the words that I speak, I, these are not my words. They're the father's words. The works that I do, it's not me doing it. It's the father doing it. It's the father who lives in me. He gives me the words and he performs the work. And that's how we're supposed to live. That's John 14 and 10. Two verses later, he says, the same works that I do, you guys are going to do even greater works. So listen, the goal is to be one with the father. Jesus was saying that if you see me, you've seen the father. Listen, when you look in the mirror, you have to see Jesus as Jesus is first John 4 and 17. So are we in this world. Jesus established his identity in the father. Jesus is our example. Once you're born again, you have to establish your identity in him. You become one with, with the father. You become one with Jesus. You become one with the Holy Spirit. You, you got to see yourself as one. You got to know that God is on you and in you and with you and for you. And when your life, when you give up the life that you wanted for the life that God wants for you, then you know that God is your source. And you know that everything that you will ever need has already been stored up because it's his will. Therefore, it's his bill. And you are performing the will of the father. Say amen to that. All right, number five. And finally, last point, let me close this out. You got to get to the point where you can pour out your life as an offering. This is something that this is my prayer. and This is my desire that my life is an offering, right? For other people. It's like, like as an example, when I got up this morning, I was in the bed like five o'clock in the morning, even before I got out of the bed, thinking about you, thinking about this message. I was sitting there. I was like, okay, Lord, what do you, you, you know, what do you want to say? And the Lord was giving me downloads. That's why I had so much to say today. And I have, I have to deal with this tomorrow. Right? So you want to get to the point where you're blessed. And, and so, yes. Am I talking about prosperity? Yes. But this is not just money. I'm saying when you are so blessed, I don't get up in the morning and say, oh man, let me think about all my problems. No. I'm blessed. I, I, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? And so, so since I'm good, I can get up concerned about other people because we minister out of our overflow. We're going to deal with this tomorrow. You, you minister out of stuff that you have more than enough of. I can't minister to somebody else's marriage if my marriage is jacked up. I can't minister to somebody else financially if I can't pay my own bills. And so you minister out of your overflow. God wants you to get to the point where you're so blessed that you can take your life and pour it out as an offering and you're concerned about other people, not just yourself. It's not about you and your selfish desires. And I'm going and, and to deal with this tomorrow too. People that say, oh no, I just want enough of me. That's selfish. Now you might think that that sounds humble, but that's selfish. And I'm going to deal with that tomorrow. All right. So let me close out this point. When Jesus was in the earth, he was the only begotten of the father, right? He was the only begotten of the father. He was the only one like him. And Jesus said that unless a kernel of corn falls into the ground and dies, it remains yet alone. But if it falls into the ground and it dies, right, 
then boom, it becomes a seed. And that little kernel of corn is going to, the, the ground is going to crack it open and it will reproduce itself and it will become a harvest. So when Jesus was in the earth, he was the only begotten of the father. He was the only one. But now he is the firstborn amongst many brethren, right? So when he was in the earth, he was the only one. But now he's the first of many, 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 many. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. My point is that Jesus took his life. He only did what the father led him to do. And then he poured his life out as an offering. And then he became a seed and his life yielded a harvest. That's how we're supposed to live. Your life is a seed and your life is supposed to produce a harvest in this world. But you can't produce a harvest if you're only worrying about you, if you're only concerned about you, if you're only thinking about you, if you're on, oh, it's about me, 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 me. No, Rick, I can't, I can't worry about nobody in India or the Dominican Republic. I'm trying to, what about me? What about me? If, if that's how you're living, you will never walk in overflow because you're too consumed with yourself. And so when you die to self, you yield to the father, the father will bless you to get to the point where your life is not about you and your life is about him. And at that point, he could take your life and pour it out as an offering and bless other people with it. And that's how we want to live. You got it? All right. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and declare this openly over your life. Say this. Say, Father, I know it is your desire that I walk in new levels in 2021. You are leading me to level up in every area of my life. I level up financially. I make my life all about you. I only say what you lead me to say. I only do what you lead me to do. I'm led of your spirit in all things at all times. I am on this planet for your glory. My life is not about me or my selfish desires. I pursue what you destined for me. And as a result, I lack nothing. Your provision is already stored up for the vision you established for me from the foundations of the world. Therefore, I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. So please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages and you want my notes, you can get my notes for free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I want you to do two things for me. Number one, if this message was a blessing to you, then please uh, leave me some comments in the chat. I see a lot going on in the chat uh, and I'm going to go back and read those. I read every comment. So thank you for giving me some feedback. And then also number two, share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. This is something that people need to hear. Our life can't be about us. Our life is all about him. I'm going to flow in this same vein tomorrow, the purpose of your prosperity. I love you, and God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.